Okay, so here it goes. So, so basically a partition, partition types in Revit, how do we generate it? Uh, well, you're, you will have a floor and you will have a type of floor. So definitely select the types of floors that you have. Uh, I'm just gonna do something here very fast at level one. And then at level two, let's imagine we have another floor, but it could be a roof or whatever it is that we have, no? Rectangle here, level two. And then from level two to level one, there is a partition. There's a wall, architectural, and we're gonna select an interior partition like this one. And it goes from here and it does whatever stuff, no? Mm -hmm. uh, if I go to the 3D, uh, you know, normally the partitions will go, you know, from level to level, as you know. So I'm just gonna select the entire partition and, you know, they attach to the bottom. So they're clearly, you know, top and bottom. I think these are familiar to you, no? So the question is, how do I show the, for example, if I, I want to show this partition type? Uh, first, I, I can do that after, but there's actually a way to tag walls, which is very important. And I have to look at it. Uh, I, I don't even remember, probably it's under, under, should be under view. No, oh, unopened, sorry. And then you have tag by category and so on. You have keynotes. So there's a way of tagging things. Notice how when I clicked, I'm gonna skip again, tag by category. I click that and I, if I get close to the wall, this little guy comes. So this is very important in a construction document. Its partition has always a tag and normally will have a number. Okay, let's say this partition is number one this tag should have one. And then when you have a drawing of that partition on the bottom, the title is the type of the partition, let's say CMU partition, and then it should be called type one. So you know that when you look at this in plan and it says one, that you go to the partition type and it's also title one. So that's the way they speak to each other. Are these tags like something that you could drag from the project browser onto your sheet in Revit? Or well, like double if, click and open the view? I would do, I would actually duplicate this view and I would call it something, rename and call it like construction document or, mm -hmm. or detailed plan something. And I will have that plan with all of the tags and you know, of, the dimensions, the typical plan for construction document that is full of information that regards to the constructability of that project. And then the level one could be the one without tags, without dimensions, there's a bit cleaner, no? But that plan has tags, has dimensions, and that's the one you can drag into your sheets, the one with, with tags, no? The question is, what is this tag looking at? No, it says interrogation. So we need to change something in the properties of this panel or of this uh, wall partition in order to show here the number, no? So it's normally under edit type and it's somewhere here and it should be, uh, type mark, I believe it is. It could be different, but I think it's type mark. If I place number one here, let's see if it works. There, mm -hmm. one, okay? So then you do the partition type and you title it partition one. But let's imagine this partition is different. Let's imagine this one does not require these layers because it, for example, does not separate two rooms, it separates room and corridor. And maybe you want a more acoustic panel so then it's another layer, it's different than the one. It's not one, it's something else. Let's imagine just for the sake of it, that is this one. Automatically it doesn't have a number because you have to select that partition, edit type, come down here to type mark and say two. And there you go. So that's how you know by looking at a plan, all of the partitions, every single partition is tagged and you know, this partition is one, this partition is two, this partition is five. Uh, a, a house project could have up to 15, 20 partitions. So it's a lot of partitions. So you need to 
attack them, and then you have this panel, uh, whatever size, 22, 34, that has every single partition type 1 to 15. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we have that. We know how to attack panels. By the way, this would be under fine view, so you see the difference. But how do we create the partition type, which was actually the question that you raised before? So what we do is a section. Let's just do a section. Um, of the panel and you're going to have to do this for every single panel okay you do that if you don't like to see this section i recommend you hide it but you still need it because it's cutting the partition let's see if we go to the section what is it here's where you can put a title underneath which will be, uh, you know, type one, you know, and you will obviously show it as fine view and you can see that uh, you can, you know, you can see the top, the middle and the bottom, but you say, wait a minute, this is, I want it in detail now. So how can I actually put this in a panel in a very close detail um, and zoom in, no? I can't show the entire partition. So this is how it works. You click on the, cropping region, which is a uh, uh, crop region, this little guy, remember you can turn on and off. If you click that, you have several symbols. This little thing, it's a breaking line. This guy here, mm -hmm. you can break it as many times as you want. When you click there, automatically that happens. Okay. You can move the entire box of cropping region up and down. And obviously you can expand it by clicking on the blue buttons if you, by the way, be careful because it snaps to the top. If it snaps, it will get together again. It will do mm -hmm. this. So you, you, if you don't want to snap it, just be careful not to snap it. I'm control C that. And again, you select this, you move it, you don't snap. You move it out here and you can break it again. Mm -hmm. and, and you're just clicking on the Z's or whatever they are? Uh, they're little circles in blue. Oh, oh, you're okay. And then another thing is, so this says section building section, and I saw if you do the drop down, at least for me, you can do wall section. So if we're doing partitions, should we change it to wall section instead, or is there not really a difference? Uh, I think it could be good to to just have a clear mm -hmm. title of what it is, but yeah. the, you will be doing exactly the same. So Revit will know that's a wall section, so we somehow save it somewhere as a wall right. section. Okay. So again, I'm, I'm gonna zoom in in. And mm -hmm. so you can zoom in and change the scale to whatever scale here, and you can shrink it as much as you want. So here's the point, you get to a point where you're zooming in a lot and you're happy and you say, well, I wish I had, uh, you know, all of the details that I, well, you do have some details under annotate components. You know, you can search for some other details by loading uh, annotations. I believe there are other elements. Profiles, I think it might work. That all of, when you go to annotate, mm -hmm. was a yeah. annotate and component, all of those are basically blocks, which are basically a, a bunch of lines uh, together. For example, uh, I don't know, like the breaking line is somewhere. So you can put a breaking line here, you know. Uh, you can put a, I don't know what this is. This is a W shape detail, no? So you can search for a bunch of details here uh, and load as many as you want uh, here. But sometimes you're not gonna be able to load the the block that you wish you had, no? Maybe some things you have to draw. And that's when you also go to annotate and detail line and you start drawing as if you were a, in two dimensions. Just imagine there's a profile here, no? So you will do this little drawing there. And you can add more a region. You can add a region here with a hat, you know, that will be the region aspect. You can add another line. I don't know, maybe there's a particular detail on the top, you know, and then you draw a line here and then you do a region here. So basically you can only do so much with the Revit 3D models, mm -hmm. which is the wall. Maybe some profiles could go there and you can generate them with you know, the techniques that we saw last semester. But there's a point where it makes more sense to draw things in 2D. Mm -hmm. And that's when you go to annotate, detail, regions, and components, maybe re revision clouds, 
maybe detail groups, insulation, you can start, you know, drawing insulation literally like that. Mm -hmm. So you, you can generate all of these things very easily, but they will be 2D. Anything that you do from annotate, dimensions, uh, you know, all of this stuff, by the way, you can add text, tags, etc. All of those are 2D, remember? So mm -hmm. those belong only to this section. If you duplicate this, only you're not taking those details. Only if you duplicate with detailing, you're taking those details, okay? Mm -hmm. You can also bring drawings from AutoCAD and insert them here by, by insert AutoCAD. But if you're not using AutoCAD, I recommend that you just go to annotate and you detail lines, you create dimensions, you create regions for hatches, you create all of these things using the annotates the tools. No, I know that your professor is going to ask you for uh, annotations of text. So, for example, mm -hmm. this could be a profile. So, you're going to click the one with whatever type of line you want. And you're going to click here and you're going to write down metal, whatever. No, uh, that's good. If it's big, it's also because of the scale. So, that will be changing. And you can move the the text, whatever you want it. You can move the arrow. Uh, you know, you can indicate something else. So you know, this is will be the way I think you will most probably be annotating mm -hmm. uh, your drawing. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think. I mean, you can tag some stuff as well. Uh, there, if you have a stair, you can number the risers of the stair after a section. Uh, there's all of these little little things, but mm -hmm. ultimately. What you're gonna do is create a partition in, in 3D. Maybe a couple of details you can do in 3D, maybe not. Go to the section of the wall and then zoom in and start drawing like crazy with the detail lines, with the hatches, with the region, and potentially with some components. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then just to clarify, so when you import your section or you open your section view and it's huge because you have it at like one and a half scale, you just click the um, crop region box and then the break lines to break it up and uh, drag the arrows to make it like shorter. Uh, sorry, repeat that one again. I was actually, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're good. I was moving stuff. Sorry again. Try um, again. So when you bring your section, you open up your section, it's like huge because it's one and a half inch scale. Um, you just click the crop region box and yeah. then the break it up with the break lines and then drag the, okay, those pole arrows. Not, yeah, because I was doing like the circles and I'm like, it's just cropping it. Yeah, so the circles are to somehow stretch the box. These little arrows are to move mm -hmm. the box and these are to break. You can break a thousand times right. and shift and move. If you break something and you lose something, like, you know, this one is not worth, you can still move it and search for what is it that exactly can you want to you know. So you move the thing down until you find the detail you want. And then mm -hmm. you, one thing that took me a while is that you can actually blend or connect too, you know. So you just connect them. It will give you a, a mm -hmm. warning that you say that's fine. Yeah, so it's very easy. You will yeah. see that there's only three symbols. There's the breaking, there's the stretching, and there's the moving. With those three, you can do anything you want to do for sure. Okay, awesome. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you so much. No yeah, problem. thanks a lot. Uh, um, one question, do you, since you recorded, or is this going on like your YouTube or is there another way that, because I'm meeting with another student who's just asking for help. And so if this video would be helpful to them, is there a way yeah. they could find it? So they will find it exactly in the, yeah, the, let's put it in the YouTube uh, channel that we used to have. I have to go and see where, where, that, where that was. <laughs> but I will put it there in the same link. You you have the link as well or? 